I was never gonna be a man's physique. Didn't have much of an off season. I like his physique better. I'm always very energetic. I will have to put me as one of the greatest. Mr. Olympia was won by the back. Hey, Milos. Hey, Vlad, how you doing? What's up, man? Good. It's good to meet you, man. Yeah, finally. I've All been right. just watching you on the, you know, YouTube. First time I have a chance to talk to you. Nice, 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 man. Uh, um, it's definitely a great pleasure having you here today with us. Uh, I definitely want to do it in person, man, but this coronavirus. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, uh, I'm not expert of that. Uh, I don't think I have anything interesting to say about it, really. <laughs> well, because, you, uh, I mean, uh, you know, you leave this to the experts that they, they know what they're talking about. This is one thing I, you know, I can just, uh, you know, say general things that I don't think anybody would be uh, interested in. Well, what kind of advice do you give to your clients and also just uh, gym goers every? Because the gyms are closed right now in most places, yeah. right? So. What, do you, what kind of advice do you give people to, what, do, what should they be doing right now, you think? I mean, uh, uh, if you can go to the gym, of course, you, you have to do anything possible to stay in shape at home. So uh, cardio is not limited. I like them to, to stay lean. I mean, I was lean all my uh, pro career. I never let the, uh, you know, that off season creep up and, and gain so much fat. So the guys that I train, and, and there was like so many going into the show that is canceled, they, they're quite lean. So I want them to stay lean, you know, continue the cardio, you know, keep the diet clean. And then, of course, if they can do any exercises uh, at home, many of them ha have some dumbbells and barbells, you know. So, you know, for sure, uh, high levels of multivitamins, uh, all the, uh, you know, essential fats. So, you know, micro uh, micronutrients have to be there to stay healthy. But uh, prevention, uh, another way. Is that everybody knows just you know keep your hygiene keep your hands clean and that's as far as i can advise them i mean really i'm no expert on coronavirus there's a lot of conspiracy theories uh, i don't want to even go in it because i don't know about it mm -hmm. do, you, do you think of bodybuilders in general right like when it comes to flu or sicknesses you know cold do you think bodybuilders are generally um more prone to getting over it or do you think they because they because of the genetics and also because of the supplements and because of the training or do you think the bodies are weaker usually because they train hard it's more you know it's it's more it's more a pressure on the heart you know different body parts and stuff like that what do you think no i actually think it's quite the opposite i think they're more resistant to it uh, i don't know yeah i really think so i mean uh, uh, are we on air or uh, yeah we're recording we're, we, we're recording yeah for sure okay so anyway uh uh, I told you the, the the subject that I see that quite often came, you know, to Generation Iron and the other things is use of anabolic steroids and pointing fingers how unhealthy they are, and bodybuilders are damaging their their health and shortening their lifespan and all that stuff. Really, where is the evidence of that? Uh, the, the thing about uh, uh, basics that everybody is supposed to know, and I, I might step on a, you know a few foots, but I'm going to say it. What are anabolic steroids? Are they drugs, destruct destructive drugs, or constructive medications? They are, as you know, uh, synthetic derivatives of anabolic steroids made about in 1930s. For what reason? They have a medical purpose to actually help old, injured, sick, wasting diseases, burned patients uh, recover. So. They promote constructive metabolism. So they're building, not breaking down. So it's beyond me how they are labeled dangerous one. Abuse, incorrect use of any medication can get you in trouble. But uh, anabolic steroids as a uh, medicaments are health promoting. I'm gonna state, state this, I'm gonna uh, stand behind it. The increased protein synthesis, you know, the lower uh, protein degradation, they're, why are they giving to the people they're about to die and they're majorly ill and weak to revive? Oh, I mean, back in, in the 60s, 70s, uh, I remember even uh, the whole trend about uh, a medical field was warning athletes that steroids don't in increase uh, uh, performance and you, they are very unhealthy and dangerous, you shouldn't be using, and for sure, you're not going to get any bigger, stronger, faster, or recuperate. As you know, they, they promote it. This is why it's doping. Whoever is using them are superior physically. They are 
bigger and stronger and faster and, and, and so on. But the bottom line is uh, so many people, even when I was approached many times in international travels, I said, oh, you don't use steroids, right? Oh, yes, I use them. As a matter of fact, I use them for 30 years. You are pro, you're, I, you're pro steroids. I'm pro steroids, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm using them as we speak. Uh, you know, really. No, no, no. So let's clarify this. Um, what is Clark Kent on steroids? A Superman. He can fly. You know, this is uh, always what I want to say. Uh, what is so bad is just like ignorance that people assume. You know, take PDR, you know, pres prescription drug reference, and point out an open page suddenly any medication whatsoever. And then you're going to see possible side effects. And then you see all this cardiovascular, renal, hepatic, da 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 da. It's for everything and anything. Now, anabolic steroids comparatively would create much lesser side effects because they're health promoting the constructive metabolism type of drugs. So don't confuse, okay, the use of ignorant uh, uh, typical bodybuilders. They would just go with the bigger is better, more is better. You know, this guy is using this much, so I'm going to use more. But if you use it wisely, which I recommended to all my relatives, all my friends, you know, you can enhance your health. So uh, on that note, we, we touch the subject if uh, bodybuilders are more prone or resistant uh, to uh, any illness, I think they're more resistant. They're, they're uh, built better and, uh, and uh, uh, they, they have a help, uh, ergogenic help you know, to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got into steroid conversation really quickly, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, I mean, the, the question here is, what is, a, what is a proper steroid use versus improper steroid use? You know, so what is hormone replacement therapy? And I, I'm going to tell you the way I got introduced to, to uh, testosterone, actually. My father was a doctor back in Serbia, actually, Yugoslavia. Back in the day, there was a bag. You know, the doctors would go to the other houses. And uh, I remember the first time I've seen, uh, like, ample testosterone. Like, oh, my God, what is that? And, of course, my father explained me, male hormone testosterone, which makes us men, you know, more muscular, more aggressive, bigger, stronger, right? The declines as we age. And it was, it was back in the 70s that uh, my father said, yeah, that's uh, very wise to uh, replenish what you uh, stopped making. So he was, yeah, I'm not going to say pioneer of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, testosterone uh, replacement therapy, but mm -hmm. he was doing this back in the 70s, mm -hmm. okay? But we're talking, about, we're talking about dosages that are prescribed, right, dosages. prescribed so, by a doctor. So right? what, what was the dosage? This is how, like, what needs to be replaced. As you know, normally it's given, like, 250 milligrams initially for every couple of weeks. That's for normal man, okay, that uh, is, you know, uh, declining in, in uh, uh, levels of testosterone they have. So this would be uh, a start. And then it would be up to like 250 a week uh, that uh, was considered, okay, especially if you are more physically active, if you are going to the gym, you have some breakdown uh, you have a justification of using a little bit more. Uh, there was late 90s, and uh, I can't quote you which study, but there was a famous study that was uh, published. Uh, the, there was like, thousands of uh, men with uh, 600 milligrams of testosterone a week. This is probably which revolutionized all these uh, uh, clinics and hormone replacement uh, therapy clinics that, that, that start popping out everywhere. And they, they had uh, tremendous positive results and none of the negatives with the 600 milligrams a week, which was like so advanced and so like unbelievable amount that you shouldn't be taking. So, as you know, you, you have been around the bodybuilders. I can openly tell you, I have never used more than 750 milligrams of testosterone a week for all the years that I was competing. And this is... Uh, when I'm cycling, okay, with that you add, uh, you know, certain other things. But 500 to 750 milligrams was my standard. And uh, 
this would be my standard right now, uh, 500 milligrams a week uh, uh, for for somebody my age, uh, and uh, I'm still going to the gym six days a week. You know, so I found this, uh, and I've been doing this for over 30 years. Uh, and I'm going to tell you this also. I had a as a teenager genetic disorder of uh, my liver, hepatic uh, Gilbert syndrome, which uh, basically I was told, oh my God, if you train with the weights and uh, if you touch the steroids, you're going to die. This is like, you know, so critical. And here I am 30 something years later, uh, still training six days a week and still taking steroids. And uh, uh, if I didn't have a life uh, <laughs> threatening divorce at uh, one point I would uh, look much healthier and younger at this point but I don't complain you know like so uh, again I, I just want to speak openly to the all the audience because as soon as they hear steroids danger uh, heart attacks um, cardiovascular problems renal problems hepatic problems really how many bodybuilders do you know that really die exclusively, that they can point fingers at steroids. The many deaths in bodybuilding contributed to many many other things they were using, not anabolic steroids. You know, so uh, it, it's just uh, a fact. Yeah, you know, the, the the people jump into conclusions, but uh, again, what you're gonna get when you take something exogenous from the outside, testosterone or some synthetic derivative of uh, testosterone, all the anabolic steroids formulations, they have a maybe higher anabolic effect, less androgenic effect, more tissue uh, promoting constructive uh, actions, recovery. I mean, I was at four degree burns back in 2004. As soon as I walked into the uh, Maricopa Burn Center in Arizona, Doctor told me, you know, sir, I'm going to put you on uh, anabolic steroid oxandrolone, and uh, I said, <laughs> you know, are you going to lower my dosage or increase it? And let me tell you, you know, that was back in that time, and people know dosages of oxandrolone. Uh, they had the studies on 130 milligrams a day. You know, so uh, nobody will actually takes that much, but that was uh, uh, indicated for. Or uh, injury. Uh, so this is uh, what I want to tell you. In the last thirty years, I probably communicated with uh, over ten thousand bodybuilders, amateur professional level, uh, all over the world, doing uh, conducting seminars, and of course, they're talking openly. Um, I had uh, many bodybuilders, uh, literally. Okay, it's a good friend of mine, a German guy. That he says, "Look, Milos." I'm a living proof that no amount of steroids can kill the man, <laughs> because he was doing a you know obscene amounts, and uh, which I'm, I'm not promoting, and I'm not saying that the people would uh, supposed to do that. But in those extreme cases, this guy is still in Germany kicking ass, still looking good, you know, uh, even though he was abusing it for many many years. So um, this is that one touchy subject that. Uh, you know, sometimes you touch a subject, but we all agree, okay, let's not do it. Let's let's uh, uh, tell it's dangerous so nobody should ever touch it. Anybody at 50 years of age plus, I would tell you, you should go to uh, your doctor, check your testosterone level, see where it's at, and if it's low, replace it because you're going to have a completely different life with more energy, more sense of well-being, uh, recuperation would be on a different level. Libido is gonna, you know, be increased. So, all the actually things that we want. This is why you know people are saying it's uh, steroids are addictive. Well, they're not really psychologically addictive, but uh, physiologically, when you feel like a clap, you feel how you feel them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you feel that like you're stronger, you can basically fly if you're Superman, right? And this is the kind of things. And, and look, I'm talking to a lot of athletes from other sports. And of course, they're all very 
warn, you know, like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this, it's dangerous and all this stuff. It's not dangerous if you especially have a, a medical supervision and advice. The only problem is that no doctor is really that liberal to say, okay, look, mixed martial artists, they're having a six hours a day of, you know, beating, you know, to the, to the ground, you know, workouts, day in, day out, day in, day out. They have a tremendous catabolic activity in their body that is going to basically, you know, waste them. So would they be justified to use it? Yes, for me, absolutely. But it's not allowed because let's have a, you know, clean sport and proper sport. And, uh, you know, so from aspect of uh, clarity, you know, like, uh, let's all be natural. But uh, then again, how many athletes in Olympic Games do you think are really natural? And this is what I had a rude awakening back in uh, 2000 when I had a you know, pleasure of working with uh, Baco Labs and uh, Charlie Francis uh, for a Project World Record and talking to them. I said, like, look, you know, there's so many athletes that they use it, they just, you know, pass the test. So what we did, we did a Project World Record, you know, for uh, uh, Fastest Man Alive. I don't know if you actually even know that, but it's uh, on the internet, you can read it. And um, we created the fastest man, the fastest man alive within nine months. Yeah, using, yeah, using yeah, undetectable steroids that any chemist right now can produce. There is instantly, I can probably list to twenty uh, compounds that were never made, can never be tested for. And I, I'm not even uh, researching this anymore. But at that point, it's okay. We can do this, this, and that. And we created something, and they used it, and uh, everybody was passing at UCLA test, no problem. And this would this would go on, uh, you know, if there was not uh, conspiracy that somebody sent a sample, you know, so they they actually test it for it. And once you have a metabolites or something, then uh, you can back test everybody. And that was a huge scandal. But uh, in reality, you know, really. Um, I would like you, you have a natural Olympia t-shirt right now, I see it. So you're all promoting natural things. Yeah, I, I very much respect them and uh, I, I think it's great. But there is like so many athletes in so many sports, they're just pounding on their bodies. These kind of workouts are not physiologically uh, recommended. This is extremes. So should you have a justification of using something to promote healing? Yeah, in my opinion, and this is why I chose to do it. So, um, I have a question. So, uh, that was a very long answer. I mean, it was, it was, it was a lot of information, and it's, it's very interesting uh, the way you look at it. But So, if a client comes to you, a bodybuilder comes to you, and you, and you, yeah. take, you take him on as a client, um, you prepare uh, what's called a cycle for that person, meaning that what compounds to take, the amounts, that, that's, that's, that's yeah. the nature of, the, of, the, of your work as a guru, right? Yeah. Yeah, you see, this is probably you know very bad saying publicly on a, on a <laughs> uh, you know, platform that everybody can see. It's like, oh, you're not a, a medical expert; you don't have a right to do it, right? I'm sure. You know, I'm so, sure. I'm sure a lot of people will say it. Actually, yeah. Yeah, of course. So, who am I, you know, to do it? So, it's uh, if I say that's what I'm doing, I might end up in jail for it. But yeah, in, in general, um, whoever comes to me first, uh, the, the, the request is the drug using history and the amounts, length of time, compounds they were using. And really, there was millions, not millions of times, but many times that they dramatically have to reduce and, and actually couldn't even convince them that you don't supposed to take that much. And I had a pro bodybuilders and it was like one three-way call when uh, one famous bodybuilder would you know, call me and ask me, okay, you know, how much testosterone I take a week? I said, why would you ask that, that question? You already know. No, no, answer it. So I would say 750 milligrams a week. And then I would hear a third, uh, you know, there was a three-way call. Somebody else, oh, I said, hold on a second. What's going on? You know, just to be tested, okay? So, yeah, uh, I would, of course, advise uh, lower dosages. And uh, in pro bodybuilding, uh, you got to understand, uh, I trained... 550 times a year, which is like 
two times a day, six days a week for 15 years straight. And I had my cycles off and on constantly. Um, I can tell you, uh, whatever amount of time that I would be on, 10 weeks, I would go five weeks off and 12 weeks, six weeks off. That was my general rule of thumb that I was doing throughout uh, my whole career. Uh, I competed in every organized show pretty much in IBB. So I didn't have a commodity of just like, okay, I'm going to have a full year off and I can, you know. And, and I tell you, I never felt uh, in danger or uh, uh, affecting my health in any negative way whatsoever. My diet was proper, my uh, recuperation, you know, I always made sure that uh, you stimulate in the gym, you recuperate when you get home, and you feed it. You know, my do, diets do, were... Do you, feel, do you feel responsible um, at all? Because obviously you, you're one of the top gurus in the game in bodybuilding. Everybody, yeah. everybody, knows, everybody knows you, everybody knows your accomplishments. But uh, do you ever feel uh, responsible for the athlete that you train, his health and longevity? Do you, yeah. do you feel a responsibility? Absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, first thing that I care, if you're my client, first thing that I care for you is a human being, not as an athlete. So, of course, you are in the same extreme sport as me. So, what does it take to get on Olympia stage? So, you're going to take certain risks. Uh, I'm there to, you know, try to control as much as possible, right? Uh, sometimes you have to save athletes from themselves because if I tell them take one and they take three, it's not good, right? But uh, this, there was common trend, or oh, you need to take more. I mean, really, cycles that I've seen it was astonishing. I mean, sometimes this, this is impossible. This should be, you know, in a week, and they're taking in a day. And uh, I think that also had uh, something to do with this uh, German magazine, I think, uh, uh, I forgot, Stern or something, that published um, Andreas Munzer's cycle. There was actually a weekly cycle that they published daily. And uh, this is why a lot of people, uh, you know, this is what people do. I mean, nowadays, social media, back uh, 10 years ago, there was forums. And I remember going on getbig.com, and I actually had to uh, several times get involved. It's still there. You know, you can, you can uh, Google it. My Olympia cycle, I, I published there because guys were just going crazy, recommending crazy dosages, and I tell them, please don't listen, whatever it was, GH15 on some <laughs> other usernames, I forget who it was, they would just, you know, throw the numbers, and, you know, a lot of people are vulnerable, they would, they would believe it, they're naive, and they would like to say that there's no way that Dorian would look the way he, he does with the cycle that he claimed, and I don't know if you interview him about this, I mean, his cycle was considerably lower than anything I've seen lately. When you say the client comes to me, it's amateur, and show me the, the protocol. It's like, why? Oh, but he used this in the last three years already. So what do you mean I have to cut it on half? Like that uh, pro bodybuilder that was on three-way call, actually I got I cut his cycle on third. And next year he succeeded with the greatest, you know, breakthrough of the year, you know, by cutting his steroids on uh, one third. Mm. Or what you're doing. Interesting. Do you think gurus often get a bad name today? I mean, I mean, Chad Nichols yeah. was accused of of killing his clients recently. You know, do you think? Yeah. Generally, it's like a it's like a bad rap almost. A lot of the guys get. It is. You know, first thing that you ask, do I feel responsible? Right. So of course, if I say no, I don't feel responsible. I just uh, you know, help them do what they would want to do anyway. Right. So it's not the right answer. But uh, those guys are coming, you know, to me to prepare them for the show with a history of usage and uh, their own experiences. And then you have to, you know, tweak that around to pick them for the contest and try to make them healthy. So back in the day when I would uh, take uh, off that for psychotherapy, that meant off. Today, off means a bridge cycle. That bridge cycle is a uh, uh, higher than probably my Olympia cycle. This is what I've seen, right? So when you when you, when you try to tell someone that is twenty years old and stuff like, look, uh, you need to completely, uh, you know, get off of it. You know, reestablish your endogenous production. You know, do this PCT protocol and then do the blood tests and, and monitor your health and see how you feel. 
um, you know, th this is how it's supposed to be. But now let's touch the subject of um, like Chad Nichols being accused of this. This is extreme sport, right? And uh, this anabolic steroids, you know, for a competition, you're doing uh, uh, diuretics, you do, you know, other kind of, uh, you know, enhancers that, you know, just help you go through the workouts because, you know, low calories and everything else. So, of course, we are aware of what guys are taking and the risks, right? But now, would that actually uh, enhance the, let's say, renal, you know, the disease of Clex Wheeler that he had? Or, uh, I don't know, Don Long or somebody else? Uh, it's quite possible, yeah? That, uh, but was Chad responsible for it? I wouldn't call him responsible. He was uh, guiding them to the stage to do something they would do anyway. He would just guide them specifically and probably in a way healthier way and, and, and safer way. Mm -hmm. You mentioned um, getting off the cycle, right? Getting off the steroids. But isn't yeah. it true once you take in um, testosterone on such high doses, once you get off of it, you might fall into depression? And it's, so that's why, because yeah. you naturally can't produce it anymore. I mean, don't you feel like... Uh, it's, is, it, is, 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 that, is that true or not true? It's not true. You know, no. It's not true if you do it correctly, if you do it the way I was doing. So uh, it's always negative feedback. If you, you have your endogenous production at a certain level, you do it exogenous. Now, if, uh, obviously, it's more circulating. Your endogenous is going to go down. And they would advise you and scare you, like, okay, if you do it too long and too much, you can completely shut down and you can never reboost, which is potentially true, but that would take long time and a, a great amounts. You know, for me that I was doing, and I, I had all the journals since 1987 until 2003, what I was doing, I would completely get off of it. Now I would boost my endogenous production with the specific protocol of ACG, Clomid, and uh, Novadex, you know, there's a certain medication that can, you know, uh, enhance and, uh, accelerate to the great degree your own production. So within, you know, four or five weeks of that, I, I would feel no different, you know, that uh, uh, I, I ever was. You know, so there is, there's a, uh, again, using it too much too long, having a bridge cycles and never getting off for two, three years, yeah? Then, you know, trying to get off of it, probably you're going to go into depression, you, you're going to have a, hard time, you know, bringing back your, your natural levels. But uh, that takes a long time of a wrong usage. So it's like, a, it's almost like science to it, obviously, right? To bodybuilding, to competitive bodybuilding. How many compounds does, a, like, just generally speaking, like a bodybuilder who's on a competitive level today, in today's stage, how many different compounds does one need to take? Because it's not just testosterone, obviously. There's a lot of different components. Yeah, you know, so uh, put it this way. A lot of people, whatever is on the list, they would take everything. There is uh, no reason for it. Okay, as far as anabolic steroids, we could construct the cycle. I mean, testosterone is main androgen uh, that has anabolic and allogenic properties. Now, anabolic steroids are tweaked around, right, the molecule of testosterone to have enhanced anabolic properties and less androgenic. A bodybuilders, we don't need so much androgens. We are using anabolic steroids for what? anabolic action because we want to anabolize we want to uh you know build this is what we want we don't want to you know so much testosterone and i know that there's a guys that are taking you know ridiculous amounts why you know because some gurus would say or whatever protocol would be published somewhere you know so how many compounds it would usually be uh, a little bit of testosterone like i said 500 750 milligrams and then you add anabolic a compound of the choice. Now, depends where you're at, your contest preparation, are you gonna use something that maybe could cause some water retention that you wouldn't wanna have last four weeks before a show? This is how you change the compounds. Uh, I would uh, insist on changing them quite frequently, like every four weeks, you know, because uh, I've seen, you know, major benefits of, you know, changing a compound rather than using the same one. And then, you know, there is, uh, that's usually injectable form of steroids, right? But then there is this uh, oral versions. Unfortunately, it's like, you know, 17 uh, 
alkaline, right? It, it's like so hepatically uh, dangerous, which is you know really questionable if they are, but they are orally uh, available and uh, observable and and uh, active. So a lot of people avoid tablets because they really they're scared of this hepatic um, disaster that can happen. But it's really not like that. Even that oxandrolone, there is you know you know seventeen alpha al uh, alkylated anyway. DHT uh, derivative. Uh, it's given, you know, for like six months to the ladies in the hospitals. You know, it's it's not like uh, it's like uh, four weeks or something is going to just completely deteriorate your liver. The the possibly the worst one, halotestine. Do a little bit of research on you know, what is really used for, and you see the prolonged usage. And yeah, they're going to warn you about hepatic problems, but they're going to monitor your uh, liver enzymes. And then uh, if it goes to a certain level, they can maybe reduce it. But it's not so dramatic that people think. Another thing is that... Uh, human my, uh, a human growth hormone as well, correct? HDH. Uh, HDH. Yeah, what about the human... That's also, so part, of about, the, that's also part of the... Oh, of the, oh yes. So the the... As far as anabolic steroids, that's uh, how you do it. You know, you have an androgenic anabolic uh, combination and maybe you add some oral. What can you add to it? And I'm sure you're going to touch the subject of insulin as well. Growth hormone insulin. Growth hormone is more anti-catabolic than is really anabolic. You know, so it, it is going to, uh, also it's fat burning is going to uh, help you get leaner, you know, definitely. But it's not as... A word will say growth hormone. As soon as you hear growth, you expect now that this is why Nassau's body was the, the way he looked or somebody else. It's not really, um, you know, that growth promoting or anabolic. It's more anti catabolic. Uh, I touched the subject of insulin. I know that you had uh, many times uh, guests, they would say, look, I don't know, insulin is like evil. And all that is, stuff. is it true? Is it, is it true that you are the person that's introduced insulin to bodybuilding? Yes. Because my producer told me that was a fact, that you're the one that brought it into Yes. It. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I tell you, uh, I tell you uh, why I, I, I got it. I had a privilege, you know, to actually, you know, meet some people from Eastern Bloc, from Eastern Germany, Romania, Russia, and I've seen some of the protocols back in the 70s. And back then, besides growth hormone and anabolic steroids, insulin is mentioned. I say, why on earth, you know, would you use insulin? And I said, like, okay, well, insulin is the strongest anabolic hormone. It's a storage hormone. So you can, you know, put whatever is in your blood into the tissues. And if you know how to manipulate at the right time, right nutrients, putting into the right tissues, it's your best friend. If you don't know how to do it, if you don't know how to drive the car and it puts you, you know, uh, under the, the wheel, you know, the steering wheel, you're going to crash probably. So it's not insulin that is dangerous and it's like uh, that drug that um, created all these problems. Because I, I tell you, uh, if you follow my bodybuilding career and I competed more than anybody else, now uh, Dexter Jackson surpassed me, but I had a 72 pro shows. And I used insulin from 1993 to 2003. I did not step on the stage once without using it in off-season pre-contest and recovering up. Did I have a distended stomach ever? Did I have a bubbly gut like uh, people are accusing, oh, this is the reason, you know, uh, insulin is doing this? So um, I challenge you to take the pictures from 1993 and uh, I can show you all my protocols. Now, if you know how to manipulate it, and this is why I went into debates with, with a few people that don't agree with me, I only use insulin that makes sense. When uh, you want to shove all the nutrients, if you have a proper ana uh, anabolic nutrients, like amino acids, essential amino acids, you know, creating glutamine, betalanine, citrulline, L-carnitine, glucose, you can shove it into where? muscle tissue, not uh, leaving it at any time of the day when insulin can shove it into the fat tissue. You wanted to use it when it makes uh, sense. And for me, if you, uh, I'm talking to you right now, right now, if you have a six liters of blood, maybe 10, 12 percent is in your muscles, right, right this moment, you're not active. And right now, within 15 minutes, if you're going to do squats or bench press or anything else, 
60% of that uh, uh, blood is going to go in the exact muscle that you're training. So if you saturate that blood with the exact nutrients that are beneficial, and then you have a potent agent that's going to shove them exactly in the, every muscle cell of every muscle fiber of that muscle that you're training because every muscle contraction opens up the cell that's ready for uptake. There is no other place to go but into the muscle, and this is why we train for. It's not accepted in the science. You're not going to read this in exercise physiology. You're not going to be recommended. I don't care. I, I don't need to follow what uh, is written word and now, okay, this is the only way. It, for me, it made perfect sense from the very beginning. And when I applied it and I got crazy results, and crazy results, I mean, uh, one of the first was uh, Master Asambadi's transformation, if you remember. 94 Olympia, he was uh, eight, I think, but the, doesn't matter placing, you know, you know, see his physique and see his physique six months later at uh, Houston, uh, presentation and, and neither champions going into uh, Olympia. He became a top three contender and, and threat for the crown. Uh, so, uh, again, a lot of people going to say, oh, I don't know, Miller, she's an insulin guy. You know, he's dangerous, you know, stay away from him. Did you actually uh, ever try my way of doing it uh, and then see it? You know, because I tell you, whatever you put in the blood, insulin is going to take it out and shove it into the tissues. Now, in which tissue is going to go, that's up to you. If you're smart, you're going to use to your benefits. If you're dumbass, excuse me, you're going to shove it where you don't need it. But is it I mean, true? Is it, is it true that if you mess up on a dosage, right, or if you don't eat or drink at the right time, or something, yeah. you you put yourself at risk of dying? Is that true or not true? Yeah, it's true. You know, if you know the physiology, okay, uh, this is how it works, and this is how I actually developed the program. So normally, right now, whatever your your normal blood sugar level is, let's say ninety milligrams per deciliter, that's your your normal, seventy to ninety, and then you're gonna eat some carbohydrates, obviously. Carbohydrate is going to increase the level of blood glucose, and blood sugar level is going to uh, go up. And then, of course, your brain is going to uh, uh, signal to the uh, beta cells of pancreas, release insulin, bring it back to normal. That's how it normally goes. So insulin is released when your blood sugar level uh, goes up. So now if uh, you don't do nothing and you inject it, obviously, uh, it's going to lower your existing 90 milligrams per deciliter, and when you go to 60, 50, you're going to start feeling hypoglycemic, and yeah, you can go into a hypoglycemic coma and eventually die if you don't prevent it. But this is also a very interesting uh, fact physiologically. A lot of people, they never experience anything about insulin intake or anything, but uh, they got a low blood sugar level, okay? And they're not experts, they're not doctors. What do they do? It's like almost physiologically uh, in your DNA instinct, run for a sugar. You know, you, you have a low blood sugar level, anybody, right, they, they run for a little bit of sugar. So if uh, anybody uses, obviously, insulin and get any hypoglycemic uh, episodes like or any symptoms like blurry vision, like, uh, you know, excessive sweating, then it's usually like, you know, tremors and uh, like circles around your uh, retina, right? Uh, that's a sign that you instantly need to take some glucose. So... This is dangerous. Yeah, if you are ignorant, if you inject it, I would always tell people, if you inject insulin, it's like a poison, and you have to have an antidote. Antidote is amount of carbohydrates that is maintaining that blood sugar level that you're not going to go in a hypoglycemia. You know, so uh, Dave Palombo is uh, one of the guys that uh, I know I always have the bunk heads. But Milos, why would you? You know, feed that insulin. You inject insulin, now you have to have so many carbs. Yeah, first, uh, contrary to you that suggest taking insulin in the morning, long-acting insulin is going to work all day. Why? In the morning when you're not going to train, why would you take insulin for the love of God, right? I take it, fast-acting. It is very easy to control. Have a, you know, pharmacokinetic data that, if you know, onset is in 15 minutes, peak in 45, strong action two hours, out in four hours. So these four hours, I have to monitor my, uh, my body and being under the influence, and I have to have an antidote, which 
happens to be carbohydrate amount, which is not just there to cover the insulin. I want that insulin to shove this carbohydrate into my muscle or use you know, as a glucose, as a fuel for, for a muscle contraction during a workout. So, you know, for me, it always made sense, but I know that a lot of people are, are, are judging me for it and say, oh, insulin guy, and you ruin bodybuilding and, uh, you know, you're uh, affecting people that can die. No, they cannot die if they follow my protocol. No way. I mean, uh, I, I tell you this, how potent insulin is. If you have a hyperkalemia, right? Uh, and that happened with a couple of guys that, uh, in bodybuilding. Mustafa Mohammed was the last one uh, at Olympia 2004, I think. He was uh, rushing to the hospital. He had a hyperkalemia, too much potassium that can stop his heart in any moment. How do you think the doctors would uh, uh, save him? They instantly in, in injected a, a IV insulin to you know take potassium out of the blood into the tissues. You know, so uh, if you know how to manipulate this logically, you know that uh, you know something that makes sense, which made sense for me. This is why I started using it. And you're know, right about. I mean, I brought it to the bodybuilding, so I'm the guilty one. I recently interviewed George Farah, who's a very respected um, guru, also yeah. a trainer. And um, he said he used to give his clients, you know, he would advise his clients to uh, use insulin all the time. And now he's stopping. He said he will never do it again. Uh, why do you think he? Why do you think he suddenly changed his mind? Well, you know, Chris, I don't know how he used it. And uh, if he used it and didn't get the benefits from it, of course he should stop. But I think, uh, it's, I, think, I think it's because he sees danger in it, in, in, in insulin. There is zero danger, zero, if you know how to manipulate it, right? So if you inject the insulin and you don't understand long-acting insulin, you know, they're, they're, back in my time there was uh, humulin L, R, N, U, you know, different ones, you know, that uh, goes, you know, eight hours or 12, 16 more. Now it's Lentus, the all kinds of stuff, Apidra. Um, the Humalog, the fast acting one, is very similar to your endogenous. So right now, if I, you take a carbohydrate meal, a glucose goes in the bloodstream within three minutes and peaks within 45. If you go to, you know, do the test in a doctor's office, to, you know, that's what they're going to give you, 75 grams of dextrose and they're going to check 45 minutes later so you know as far as uh, 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 George Farah saying it's dangerous explain to me what part is dangerous okay first they say you can die no you cannot die because if you maintain your blood sugar level correctly because when you inject it you're supposed to take some amount of carbohydrates to make sure that your blood sugar level is going to always be maintained so you never go under it's zero danger uh, then they say, oh, you're going to become diabetic. Well, how are you going to uh, become diabetic? If you take so much, okay, sugar, sugar, sugar without it, right? First cause of type 2 diabetes is prolonged uh, heavy increase of uh, blood sugar level with wrong eating, right? So you, you have a, you know, a lot of guys that are going to um, take so much intra workout uh, carbohydrates. Doesn't matter if it's simple dextrose or uh, you know glucose polymer, any fancy kind that actually does does do nothing better than glucose. Uh, the, the the same uh, dextrose, cheap dextrose, and that's another subject. But I, I tell you, if you take this, you overload your pancreas. Your pancreas have to beta cells have to produce it and produce it and produce it. And uh, many experts actually that I talk to agree with me that. Uh, it's actually a potential danger of becoming diabetic if you take so much carbohydrates without insulin. And uh, I also stand behind it. So imagine if your own beta cells have to produce so much, so much, so much, because let's say you train two times a day like I did, and let's say you're going to you know, use 75 grams of carbs into workout both times you train or 100, how much beta cells you know, have to produce. And then post-workout, you can also want to replenish your glycogen. You're going to again take some carbohydrates and that carbohydrates going to further increase blood sugar level. So your pancreas have to re 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 release some more. And then they're going to say, okay, here comes insulin resistance and uh, okay. So what happens if you become diabetic? 
if you if you had type one diabetic, you would die. Your cells would go in apoptosis, cellular death. You know, if you don't take insulin. So diabetics type one have to take uh, insulin to stay alive, right? And they say, oh, they synthesize. No, because they would die. So you take certain amount to cover whatever meals that you're gonna have so you can insert nutrients into the cells. That's what the insulin does. So again, it's just ignorance that people don't understand that. So it's dangerous. Why is dangerous? George Farah explain me why it's dangerous. You know, get, get us on a debate. I would be more than happy to debate it. Maybe we'll do that. So you mentioned, you mentioned the bubble guts. Um, so if not yeah. insulin, what, what do you think causes bubble guts? Well, you know, wrong usage of insulin can. Wrong usage at the wrong time, yes. You know, because uh, insulin is not selective. It's going to transport anything that is there. So if you have a glucose and amino acids, but if you have a triglycerides, it's also going to be transported. So there is a lot of intramuscular triglycerides also that you can shove it in if you have a you know, uh, high fat diet. So a lot of people are going into these ketogenic diets or, you know, having a certain amount of fats. I was always a carb guy, you know, whole, my, my whole career, uh, protein and carbs, protein and carbs, I had the minimal fats. So for me, it was the most logical. Now, when I had some of the clients I had to manipulate, I could see that, yeah, if you are uh, choosing to use insulin and you choose to say, it's okay, to use a little bit of fats because fat would slow down absorption, like you know, some people are saying, I don't need slow absorption. You know, I want to absorb what I take and I want it fast. Why would I have a slower? You know, I want to dump it in. But uh, uh, what can uh, increase the uh, size of organs? Obviously, uh, growth hormone. And that was uh, noticed back in 70s and 80s. You could actually read in some studies. Um, uh, usage of uh, you know some anabolics as well, you know so there is combination and obviously uh, bodybuilding uh, type of overeating you know just uh, having a huge amounts of food at uh, some you know sitting you know th th this is if you have to shut down five six seven eight thousand calories a day and uh, uh, you're doing this day in day out. You know, it possibly can happen. Yeah, a combination of this. You know, I'm not gonna say that insulin doesn't have a, any effect, but uh, yeah, if you if you uh, are wise and you do it at a certain times with specific diet, there is no danger. And you know, this is why I want to tell you, I'm not a genetic freak or something. You didn't. I use insulin, like I said, from '93 to 2003, every single show. And uh, look at my midsection. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it might not sound, you know, too good if I say one of the best midsections uh, in the 90s, but uh, I think so. Uh, I was very comfortable that uh, at that post, I can stand next to anyone. Is it true that um, you experimented with Synthol and almost died from it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very true. Uh, I'm, yeah, I, I'm a... Uh, open about it. I actually did a Flex Magazine article about it uh, to warn people not to use it, not to, you know, follow my footsteps and make the same mistake. Uh, well, I was told by many experts in the industry back in the 90s that uh, if I would have a bigger arms, I could possibly have a chance of, uh, you know, getting up there and even winning. So, of course, uh, uh, some of the pros at the time were using it, so I, I got tempted. And uh, that's one of those things that um, monkey see, monkey do, instead of really researching, because there was not really research papers, you can see what Sinto actually was. So how most of the bodybuilders are, uh, and I, I would be the, the guilty, I was doing the same uh, muscle head, I bought the story, served story, oh, this binds to your fiber, enlarges, and uh, you know, you can get all this a volumization, but you know, it's it's you know, nothing then the it's nothing to it, it's a very dangerous compound. Uh, what happened, you know, for me is um, that um, it was injected straight into the vein, right? So, uh, 
my ex-wife was doing it for me and she didn't aspirate, you know, she just injected and it went straight to my heart. I had a congestive heart failure and um, uh, odds, that's uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome and uh, like percentage of people that survive is uh, like very minimal, like, you know, pretty much right away they, they told my uh, parents, okay, you have 24 hours to see him alive. You know, they ask uh, my ex if I'm a organ donor and say, hell no, I wouldn't uh, donate uh, any of my organs. But yeah, there was uh, definitely um, issue with- So that's from, from a single use that happened, from a single- No, no, no I used, I used uh, for a prolonged period of time, I, I used it in uh, 98. This is when I started. And ninety nine. And did you see the, uh, did you see the improvement when you started using it? Oh uh, yeah, you know, well, I tell you this, I hated the look. You know, it started changing a shape and anatomy, and it looks stupid. I, I'm not embarrassed to say it. Whoever uh, uh, makes jokes about me, yes, it looked ridiculous, stupid, unnatural. Uh, I got my arms to be twenty two and a half inches, right? And, and they looked like a, my biceps looked like a bricks, uh, completely. You know, you can you can see it from the airplane. I mean, uh, and uh, that is the single reason why I uh, wouldn't compete uh, after after I retired, because my arms uh, are affected. You know, it created uh, fibrotic tissue and necrotic tissue, and it just uh, never the same. The shape is not there. The quality, I mean. Uh, you can hardly even feel a muscle contraction. Uh, so I was possibly uh, lucky, you know, they actually got away being uh, uh, alive to this point. You know, th this is what uh, many bodybuilders are doing. Uh, just like uh, jumping from a high rise building, it feels great when you're falling down, you feel all this air, it's beautiful until you hit the ground and it's too late. You know, so for simple users, you know, ask yourself, why on earth would you use it? Yes. Learn from my mistake. I was um, um, encouraged to have a bigger arms. Just that one little flaw, and you, you can be a top contender. You know. So I chose to do it at the time, not knowing nothing about it. I just okay, yes, sir. You know. Uh, I remember talking to Chris Clark, the inventor, and he gave me all the story of how great this is. Is okay. Well, why not? You know. Let me try it. Especially as I knew. Some of the guys on the stage were using it, you know. So, and you can you can tell, you know. So it's absolutely uh, my biggest regret of my life, and uh, it's something I'm embarrassed, but open to talk about it. Do you think it, Do you think it's widely used today, most bodybuilders? Yes, yes. Still, unfortunately, I, I have many times when I talk to the clients, and you know, they ask me for sight uh, enhancement, and, and thinking of Sintol or whatever else is now available it's horrible i mean uh it changes the shape you lose the quality uh um, but is it but is there a way to use it properly like you said it's all about proper use right is there a way to use it properly just to, maybe 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 you did it like too much you know what i mean maybe like if you did it less it would have been okay yeah know? but yeah you see so that that's that uh sell your soul to the devil okay he's gonna come and, and claim it yeah this is how i started okay a little bit and initially 98 you know, it's, it wasn't really visible, but then I got greedy, right? Oh, if I did this, let me do a little bit more. A little bit. Then I want a bigger peak of the biceps, and peak looks stupid. I was like, hey, man. Then I, I had to like uh, lower it and then put in a lower biceps. Then it became like a brick. And, and that's that's what people are going to do. Uh, why? There's nothing better than that natural uh, muscle contraction, muscle fibers that you can actually feel it. It's crazy. I used to have a, especially when you do the concentration biceps curls, I mean, there was a point of the contraction feel like your muscle is going to cramp and it's like rock hard like a steel. And I start using this uh, synthol, right? You no longer feel the contraction. You know, there is a, a softness. Then you look at like, where did all this separation between a uh, brachialis, biceps, triceps, you know, it is gone. So this is what's going to happen now. I know there are a lot of bikini ladies, or maybe they're using in their glutes because they're quite popular. 
you know. That, that's pop, uh, that's yeah. popular amongst everybody right now, actually. That's not just that's not just in the bodybuilding world. You know? Yes, I, I am. Girls uh, get out much at all time. I'm totally, 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 totally against it. It's not a uh, pharmaceutical uh, company produced product that has the defined usage. It's it's uh, uh, some I don't want to say idiot because Chris Clark would. Uh, you know, point figure to me, but uh, uh, somebody that produces for whatever reason, right? You've seen those horror pictures and videos of some guys. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't mind when people put me in that category because yeah, I did it myself. So. So what happened? You know, what happened to your arms after the the, the the What happens with the synthol that's in your arm? What happened? Does, does yeah, it so it created fibrotic and necrotic tissue and actually start atrophying. You know, so that's why I say you sell your soul to the devil. I I didn't have a great arms, but I had a decent arms. And actually, when I look you know, up to 97, you know, uh, I was very comfortable with it. But then, uh, you know, that greed, okay, make it bigger. So I got it bigger for two years, and then I got smaller than uh, there ever was. You know, so th that's, you know, pretty much scenario that uh, that might happen to everybody else. You know, why use it? Train, train hard. Eat properly. Don't use, uh, you know, synthol. So, have you ever, besides this one incident, have you ever experienced, or whether it's in your own personal training or your clients, uh, a diverse reaction to any type of steroid, like a like a really bad reaction or something like, you know, something that would make you, you know, be concerned? Hesitate, and uh, not a single time. Not uh, for me. Not for any of my guys. I mean, there was. Uh, couple of guys that uh, use insulin and, and felt um, hypoglycemic episode, right? They got in, a, in that uh, why? Because they didn't do it correctly. And uh, uh, he's like one of the famous trainers now as well. First time I, I uh, advised him, he actually went from middleweight in uh, two weeks. Uh, middleweight, he didn't place in the show in two weeks as a heavyweight that he played second and almost won overall uh, uh, in two weeks period. But the way I advised him was to use uh, 10 units of insulin specifically before and after and take so much carbohydrates after. And then after the first day, he says, oh, he got uh, hypoglycemic something. And then second, no, 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 what's going on? I said, I guarantee you, you are not using properly. So then he told me, oh, is this... Uh, 10 units of a uh, insulin needle, that's one unit of insulin. I said, for the love of God, that's called insulin needle. If it's 10 units on insulin needle, that means 10 units of insulin. But you know how when they would mix the GH sometimes, you know, they would take like to get the four units to take, a, you know, 100 cc, you know, you know the 100 uh, milliliters. So basically he was using 100 units uh, each time instead of 10. So this is what happened. Of course, you're going to go in hypoglycemia. But I told him, all my clients, if you ever feel any hypoglycemic uh, uh, symptoms, instantly take some glucose tablets. You know that's uh, uh, easily available anywhere. And you take the three, four glucose tablets, you're going to get out of it instantly. You know it takes two to three minutes to to be out. So that's the only thing. Uh, steroids, no issues whatsoever. Yeah. Um, some people would complain, like uh, uh, they would um, uh, lose appetite, for example, for, for certain products. Uh, some would break out, you know, they get some acne, and usually. What about what about a term called roid rage? Have you ever witnessed that? Uh, roid rage, okay. Is that a Is real it, thing or what? It's 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 a, affects some people definitely, but. Uh, um, Psychologically, and specifically, there the are certain compounds that would do more or less for certain people. Uh, yeah, you know, they, they claim that this one bodybuilder killed somebody and it's a roid range. Uh, it's going to be more your uh, specific low carbohydrate, low calorie diet that's going to make you, uh, you know, raging than uh, anabolic steroids. And anabolic steroids have some. Um, contribution to it. You're looking at the man that is using for 30 years. I have never 
experience something, it's like, okay, now I'm really edgy. I'm really, uh, you know, so impulsive. I never thought of myself. Uh, did anybody ask? Yeah, you read in a, in a journals, you read on the internet the, some issues, and of course, Roy the Rage is out there. You know, it's, it's a subject that many people talk about, so it should be contributed to, to steroids. But then again, I haven't seen anybody that uh, I trained off season when he's not using or when he is on, there would be any different. Uh, diet wise, yes, you can have a natural guy. That that doesn't take steroids. Uh, I would put on a ketogenic diet for ten days. They would rage and want to kill you, you know, because they're just starving. What about diuretics? I mean, I hear that diuretics use can be very dangerous. Uh, yes, they can contribute to deaths in some instances. Is instances is that is that true in your opinion, or is it also how you use them? Oh no, hell yes, you know. So let's put it this way in perspective, uh, and this is uh, uh, you know hard to discuss because uh, judges. Uh, wants you to be dry, right? They, they want that crazy dryness so people are going for these extremes. But uh, if you de uh, dehydrate more than 10% of your body, you're already putting your body into the danger. And I know a lot of people that can use, lose 15, 20 pounds overnight with a heavy diuretic usage, usually loop diuretics. So is this dangerous? Absolutely. Uh, do I uh, advise? No. Uh, do I uh, give some yes because if you want to win the contest and you know you depend how you look and how you're gonna you know carb load for the show and what you're gonna take sometimes you're gonna need to compensate to take this extracellular subcutaneous water out usually right it, it should be uh, taken with the mild diuretics the mild diuretics like uh tyazid group you know so like uh amylorid um hydrochlorothiazide, diazide, triamterin. You know, there is a group of diuretics that uh, are uh, mild. And actually, some doctor might tell you taking hydrochlorothiazide low amounts every other night would be heart, heart healthy. So uh, mild diuretics, yes. Um, extreme diuretics like loop can be you know, super dangerous. And uh, Another thing that can be super dangerous is potassium sparing diuretics uh, that people are going to take, not realizing they can accumulate crazy level of potassium, they can stop their heart. And uh, I witnessed 1992 uh, when Mohammed bin Aziza in a room in front of us collapsed. And uh, the reason why he, he was using spinolactone, which is aldactone potassium spar sparing diuretic. Uh, lots of it, and uh, he was cramping up, and doctor came, injected him with potassium. And that's really what stopped his heart. The issue that I mentioned uh, with uh, Mustafa Mohammed, uh, 2004, I didn't prepare him or anything. I was just at Olympia, and Sean Ray called me. You know, he's, he was in his room panicking, Milos, you know, his, uh, every muscle is cramped up, what should we do? And he was giving him a Gatorade, which is full of potassium. I said, no, 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 let me get to the room. And when I got to the room, I asked him, you know, what are you taking a Dactone? So I knew that his potassium was super high. But uh, with paramedics came, they were going to inject him with electrolytes. And I said, you can't, you're going to kill him. So by the time we went to the hospital, his doctor came to me and uh, he was really pissed off at me and said, sir, do you understand? You're interfering with the medical procedure. I say, yes, this is why I interfere, because you would kill him. Uh, he's hyperkalemic, not hypo. And then he's, are you going to test his potassium? And then he says, of course. And then he came 10 minutes later. He says, oh, my God, you know, you saved his life. Because, yeah, you know, were, the normal procedure would be just you're dehydrated. They assume, okay, if you use loop diuretic is going to de 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 deplete your potassium and sodium and everything else. So electrolytes would be beneficial. But if you're potassium sparing loaded, your potassium is through the roof and you can stop your heart at any moment. You know, so at that time, you had a, actually loop diuretic can help balance it. But, you know, this is all, if some medical doctor is listening, you know, he's going to say, shoot this guy before he, he kills somebody. Uh, I'm just telling you what I've seen with the athletes. So 
for example, the same thing that happened with the Mustafa in uh, Olympia happened a week later in uh, Amsterdam. I remember after I was in the hospital in, in Las Vegas with him, I went to Amsterdam and he was, oh, Milos, my brother, how are you doing? Uh, can you check on my condition? So I said, okay. So I came to his room and there was about five pounds of dates and some bananas. And I said, okay, uh, Mustafa, which diuretic are you taking? Oh, of course, I'll duck down. I said, man, the same shit is going to happen. Okay. So if you're doing this, you have to actually balance it. You take some potassium out uh, with a loop diuretic. He didn't want to do it. And uh, same thing happened in, uh, in Amsterdam. This time, uh, Ronnie Coleman was in his room trying to help him. And me and Chris Dim came there and uh, like, realized and paramedics came. Same scenario. This time, Steve Weinberger and uh, myself, we went into the uh, ambulance and went to the Amsterdam hospital. And again, they, they treated him. But yeah, so these diuretics are real danger and it can be deaths left and right uh, because of abuse of misuse of diuretics. Uh, I would say for, because uh, I prepare many guys, obviously, the least amount will be the best. And uh, you, you save it and you look if actually somebody needs it. You see, people going to the show, they already expect, they, they schedule, I need to take it because I cannot step on stage without the erratics. So they already scheduled to take it. But if you don't need it, why on earth would you take it? And uh, this is where it comes to it. So. Mm -hmm. um, last thing I want to ask you for, for this interview is, you know, a lot of our audience are young, aspiring bodybuilders, right? Yeah. So what advice would you give to a, a like let's say 18 to 21 year old bodybuilder who wants to take it very seriously, but you know, just, just wants to get into this world of competitive bodybuilding, what he should be doing. Should they be looking for somebody like you to guide them into this world? Should they be doing some kind of research online? Like, what, what's the right approach to take? Yeah, look, um, I wish that I had somebody that can advise me back in the day, so I, I wouldn't go through trial and error, but uh, I would always encourage everybody. You don't really need people like me or Chad or... Uh, George Farah or uh, Chris Acido, you don't if you do your research. Obviously, we can share our experiences with you and, and probably get you there faster because of all the experience that I had. Uh, but uh, research is out there. You uh, apply what makes sense to you, right? If you, uh, you want to be a bodybuilder, you want to maximize everything. You want to maximize muscle stimulation in a workout. Are you going to be true to yourself? and say, okay, this workout, I felt I maximally stimulated maximum amount of muscle fibers of my, my chest, if this is the body part you train. Okay, if you did. Now, did you have a maximally beneficial nutrients in the right time? Okay, and uh, did you re recuperate uh, correctly? So, uh, are you making a progress? Inspect what you expect. If within a first couple of weeks, you don't have uh, some results, right? Obviously, you have to change something. So would you need uh, coaches like uh, me or somebody else? Not necessarily. And I'm, I'm not here to promote my business. Yeah, don't do it yourself. Do it yourself by all means. Trial and error is great. But then again, being a guided, if I'm going to go into mixed martial arts right now, would I want to go on YouTube? Like uh, Johnny Jones said, he says he, he studied from a YouTube. No, I would go to the Miss Martial Arts Academy and get the uh, you know submission specialist, jujitsu, whatever, striking. And uh, you know, this is normal thing. You know, now as far as uh, uh, people training, I think that everybody by now should know how to train. There is like so much information out there. Uh, I see that you guys have also very very uh, you know, good info. Uh, nutrition, the same thing. It's not a rocket science. You know, it's uh, a physiology, uh, physiology, you have a, your physiological need, a basic metabolic rate. So everybody can put their age, height, weight, gender, and, and see what uh, their body in a state of coma in 24 hours would need. So then you add all the physical activity that you do throughout the day, add proper nutrients. 
I am maybe a little bit extreme as far as protein intake. You know, I always suggest much more than anybody else was and say, unless you're crazy, you don't need it. And all this protein is going to be, you know, burden in the kidneys and, uh, you know, you shouldn't. Uh, there's not a single study on this planet Earth that would show a toxic amount of protein on a healthy uh, re renal system or healthy kidneys. There's not. So I know that I started also with a recommendation that you can see, you know, one gram per kilo, you know, or half per, per pound, and then you get some results. But then I said, what happens if I increase the only building nutrient because carbohydrates and, and uh, fats are only uh, energy nutrients. So if you increase protein, the more protein I put, the, the, the more uh, I uh, increase my lean body mass. So what do you think I was going to recommend to somebody? Less or more? So I always go like one and a half gram of protein per, per pound and even two. You know, so for all these uh, 18 to 20 year olds, especially if you are natural. And then I'm going to say, but Milos, because I'm not natural, I don't. Because I'm natural, I don't use anabolic steroids. I don't need that much protein because I cannot assimilate. I cannot, oh, really? Uh, why are you so uh, limited? You know, like, you know the the parachute that doesn't open. You know, uh, it doesn't work. Same thing with your mind. What makes sense to you? So, if you would increase protein intake, what can possibly happen? You know, I get the more amino acids into the bloodstream and uh, whatever tissue needs to be repaired, it's going to be available. What happens if you don't have it uh, sufficient? You think that uh, your muscle is like physiological preference of your body, number one, that uh, no, all the protein is going to go there. No, muscle is the last place it's going to go. All your organs will have a priority over muscle tissue that uh, is going to be last on the list. So when you increase the protein intake and you have all the essential amino acids available in the bloodstream at all times, you have ability to uh, build. So I would, I would say this is a one of advice. Yeah, I would highly recommend to all the bodybuilders minimum gram and a half per pound. You know, so, so that's, uh, you know, I, mean, I would say optimal, but uh, high gainers up to two grams. And the same thing, uh, I would tell you, I have all these journals. I was averaging between 450 and 550 grams of protein every single day for 15 years straight. Okay? A 15 years straight. Super excessive protein intake. You think that my renal system is uh, compromised whatsoever? Or liver, for that reason, using steroids for 30 plus years with a genetically bad liver. So this is why in the beginning, uh, of this conversation, I told you I'm not here to promote, but just like you said, for the 18 to 21 year old, should they research? Yes. But then while you add it, research a little bit about pharmacology and uh, anabolic steroids and really science behind it. And don't be pushed into what normal doctor, because the duty is to warn you don't mess with uh, any kind of hormones because you can create the uh, hormonal disbalance. Well, is this really this balance if you have more of anabolic and beneficial hormones to you as a man that is exercising and for your well-being? Just because you're throwing off the balance that's supposed to be, this is average reference range that is determined for an average person. What happens if you have a little bit more? Does it make it dangerous or healthy? Mm -hmm. Now, Milos, I think that obviously, you know, you're very knowledgeable and you have years of experience, right? Hands-on experience. And, and But do you feel like what you were saying is still kind of, it's a little taboo, but it's society, you know, it's not, your views are still, would not be accepted in a mainstream, like, world of doctors, you know what I'm saying? Oh. And, and actual things. Do, 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 you, do you ever care about that? To be, to be like... To I don't, because, you know... I'm uh, very much open for a uh, discussion. I had this in my country of Serbia back in the day. Also, back in the 90s, I was in some TV show and same thing, the, the guy asked me, oh, you don't use steroids? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. And then I said that the whole thing, that uh, they can be beneficial if you don't abuse them and so on. So the next time I went there, there, there was actually, I was on the cover of uh, some political magazine, not even a sports magazine. And, 
I'm taking, so what? And then there was a TV show that the uh, endocrinologist, first medicine doctor came. They were against the steroids, but uh, question by question, by the end, they have to confirm, okay? Anabolic steroids, if used under medical uh, supervision, can and will enhance health. And they had to stand behind it, yes. So uh, uh, is taboo? Yes, absolutely. Would I be judged 100%? Uh, you know, they're going to call me <laughs> every name in the book, but I don't care. This is uh, who I am. And I would confront all these doctors, which actually, by the way, many doctors, I would say over 50, with my recommendation, start using hormone replacement therapy and uh, start using on the, the patient because, oh, why didn't you tell me earlier? I have been talking about this for 20 something years. And that's what I'm telling you, all my good friends, my relatives, or anybody that would ask me my honest opinion, should you use them? Hell yes, under medical supervision, absolutely. Milos, thank you so much, man. It's, it's really fun talking to you, man. We, we should do it again soon. <laughs> it's a, it's a you, man. I, I, I can see that uh, you don't uh, agree with many things, but uh, listen, I, I don't no. want you to agree. I'm very neutral, and, uh, man. Very neutral to everything, actually. You know, the, the, the thing is, uh, when you say debate, I would like to see a doctors and, and just debate it. You know, because, yeah, as a medical profession, you know, you have to warn patients. Okay. But then again, starts with the word anabolic. What is constructive metabolism? Now you, you think about that word, constructive metabolism. Oh, it's not destructive. So, oh, the athletes that use doping they're superior, or they're bigger, better, stronger, faster. Oh, that's bad? This is something that is bad? We shouldn't, oh, no, no, no. Everybody wants that, right? Now, the only downfall is, only downfall is how to stay healthy. Well, do it wisely. Don't do, same thing like I said, uh, insulin, yeah, take it wrong, you're going to kill yourself. Take aspirin, you know, a bottle of it, you see what's going to happen. You know, so, you know, by all means, uh, it was great chatting to you. I mean, unfortunately, this was just a topic. We can talk about any other topic next time. Yeah, I want to do it again, man. This is a fun interview, man. I, I really appreciate it. It's, it's great to finally meet you, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm always open. And yeah, I want to say, uh, you know, for King Kamali, I love his show. And uh, I commend you guys for, for having him there. He's a man that doesn't have a problem expressing his opinion, just like I do. And I love this about him. You know, so... Uh, you know, maybe one of these days, you know, he's going to put me on his program, too. It will be a nice I'll, chat. I'll talk to him about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so All much, right. man. I appreciate your time. Anytime. Thank you.